Hey friends, it's noisy out here, but I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of my chord spelling song, um, which I wrote for my ear training students, but is also useful for fundamental students learning triads. Why? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, I've written out the chords that you'll find in a major scale, the triads that you'll find in a major scale. And they follow a specific pattern, and they have a specific way of getting used a lot that this song does. The, the home chord, the chord built on the, the first scale degree, is going to be major in a major scale. That makes sense, right? The two chord, the chord built on a second scale degree, is going to be minor. The chord built on a third scale degree is also going to be minor. The chord built on a fourth scale degree in a major scale is going to be major. Fifth scale degree, major sixth scale degree minor and the seventh scale degree is an oddball it's it's going to be a diminished chord it's actually two minor thirds stacked on top of each other or a minor third from the root and then a diminished fifth up from the root but it's the only chord in the scale that operates that way uh, plus we'll almost always find it in first inversion so it's got a parentheses around it um, this is also true, well, it's true of all major scales, so it's also true of C major, which will help you remember what the natural triads are, the triads that don't have accidentals. So C major, C is gonna be a major triad, D is gonna be a minor triad, unless there are accidentals, E is also gonna be minor, unless there are accidentals, F is going to be major, G is going to be major, a is going to be minor, B would be that diminished triad. Okay, so if you can identify the notes of the triad, you find those roots, those are the qualities that you expect unless there are accidentals. Okay, uh, I've also written out uh, the solfege for them, and that can apply to any major key. So when we sing through the song, and the song as I as it is on the video on YouTube is in B flat major, but we do it using movable do solfege. So we sing do mi so fa la do so ti re ti so do do do. So that's a one chord do mi so fa la do so ti re ti so do do do. When we sing those, we are singing the three major chords in a major scale. And, and that song is in a major key. Uh, we're singing those three major triads. Those are the three major triads in the key. Uh, so if you need to remember, those are just the, the three major triads in a key, one, four, and five. And let me tell you, there are so many songs that you know that are just built around one, four, and five. Um, then the next two most common chords that you'll hear are these two minor chords, six, and two. So, la, la, do, mi, re, re, fa, la. And those are the most common minor chords that you'll hear in a major key. La, 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 do, mi. Then we have a funky chord. It has altered solfege. Uh, and you'll see that all of the chords that have altered solfege uh, have these slashes. Um, this is not a slash chord the way you'd see it in a chord chart, but this actually just means that, that those are secondary dominance or applied dominance, which uh, are something that we're not covering right now, but uh, if you get curious, uh, you can look them up and uh, then you can look back at the song and think, wow, I already have used those. So uh, in the song, it goes back to the chorus and then it does this next verse so that we can have a three chord which is our other minor chord that we didn't talk about. Uh, so if we were in the key of do, do, mi, so, mi, mi, so, ti, and that will often go to six, la, la, do, mi. So these are also very common uh, ways of the chords progressing to each other. At the very end, we have one more uh, thing to talk about that may or may not be relevant to you right now, and that is just that the first chord of the coda, as I've called it, is, is a cadential 6-4 chord, and there are a couple ways that people write it. In fact, there are, uh, if you 
ask any two theorists about how to write this, you'll get two different answers. Um, but uh, the, the Cadential 6-4 uh, has all of the notes of a one chord in it, do, mi, and so, except that so is in the bass. The fifth scale degree is in the bass of that chord. And because the bass is so powerful, uh, it makes it feel like a suspension of a dominant chord. And so a lot of theorists like to write it as this, five with a six, four suspension going to a five, three. If, if you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it your teacher will explain it to you in another video uh, or elsewhere. Um, so a lot of people like to write it like this. Uh, people have come up with a variety of other ways of writing it, but just know that it has a dominant function. It sounds like a suspended dominant chord, but it has all the notes of a one chord. It has do, mi, and so in the chord. So. Um, so when you sing so do, so so re ti, we're going from the cadential 6-4 to a 5 chord, and that's the way it generally wants to resolve. Uh, so so do, so so fa re ti, we added a seventh. Again, don't worry about that until it's time to learn it. Uh, so so do, so so fa re ti si mi. We had another altered solfege syllable, and that was a good hint that there was maybe an applied dominant going on. A la do mi, do mi so te. Really fun applied dominant. Fa la do, and look, we're ending with our favorite three major chords. Fa la do, a four chord. So ti re ti so, a five chord. And do at the end to have one. So just remember, a major key, chords one, four, and five are major. Chords two, three, and six are minor. This is all if you don't add accidentals. And the chord built on the seventh scale degree is diminished. And if you see accidentals, you can figure it out from there what the quality of the chord is. I hope that helps. Enjoy.